to move on from Brentford, but this January is not that right time. Well, I don't know. You can never predict when when's the right time to move elsewhere. But I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious that I'd like to play for a top club. Everybody wants to play for the top clubs, fighting for titles and these kind of things. So whether it's this January, uh, uh, the right time was to be a club would to come in and pay the right money. Who knows? But the, my main focus is doing what I do on the pitch and let the background work take care of itself. You guys heard it there first, ladies and gentlemen. None other than Ivan Tony himself basically confirming that he wants a big move, a come get me plea that some would say. And could he still make a move in January? Of course, if the money's right, he could make the move. And he's basically saying, I want to go to a big club. But of course, he has made his plea that he wants to stay right now and help Brentford is sticking by them and sticking by him with the loyalty that they've showed. But on today's show, we're going to be talking about Ivan Tony. Could you guys see Ivan Tony at Arsenal? Because personally for me, this young Arsenal team needs that striker, that somebody who can get us over the line. And I think he'd have a pretty good link up with the likes of Bakao Saka, Gabriel Martinelli. And he could definitely have a good little bromance with them as definitely helps them with that little experience. And he need you need that type of arrogance. You need that type of person in your, in your striker. And I think this interview is a step closer to Ivan Tony stepping to Arsenal. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. And ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And of course, make sure you guys check out SofaScore. The link is in the description. All you need for sports. SofaScore has stats, player ratings, live scores, NBA, NFL, any, any football league that you need all under one app. You won't ever need another sports app after that. Download SofaScore right now, the channel sponsor. But let's get into it. So, the Ivan Tony interview. He spoke about his ban. He spoke about being back after eight months and how excited he is to play football again. He spoke about uh, wanting to repay Brentford for their their time that they that they gave him. And the and the benefit uh, and honestly, the fact that he's now going to be able to go and just play his football and be ready to do what he loves again as. Brentford face this weekend. They play, he he will be playing his first game back for Brentford, and I don't doubt for one second that he is going to absolutely smash it. At, he this is a guy that last year scored what twenty league goals. His first game back is versus Nottingham Forest, and I think he's going to score versus Nottingham Forest. I wouldn't be surprised if not only did he start, but he absolutely smashed it versus uh, versus uh, 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 what do you call it Nottingham Forest. Ivan Tony, of course, is still only twenty seven years old. He, you guys should go check out the Sky Sports interview. I really do suggest you guys go check out the Sky Sports interview. But he's he's free. He made jokes about being free online after after the ban being uh, lifted, eight months ban that he had to face due to the betting uh, betting situation. But now he could also not only play his football, but he could potentially find an England berth if he plays well from now until the end of the, the until summer. Because at the end of the summer, you're going to have a Euros and he could add more money to that transfer fee for Brentford, really and truly. And Brentford could even maybe agree a little mini extension so they do get the money for him. I think at the 27 years old, an experienced player who, yes, he doesn't have too many years at the top level, but he scored 12 goals his first season in the Premier League, 20 goals last season. And with the remaining, what is it? How many games are remaining in the Premier League? Let me just check quickly. How many remaining games are there in the Premier League for Brentford? Um, the remaining 20 games? No, 18 games? I, no, 19 games, sorry. we remaining 19 games. I think he could really smash it. He has half a Premier League season remaining. In 19 games, who's to say he doesn't get 15 goals? Is that ridiculous? I really could see him get double-digit goals from now until the end of the season. And I think if Ivan Tony was in this Arsenal team, his ability to link up play, his ability to score goals, his ability to be clinical would change this team. And I just want to know, would you guys take Ivan Tony at Arsenal? Are you against the, the signing of Ivan Tony? Would you rather Arsenal go sign somebody else? Let me know what you guys think. Because to me, I think Ivan Tony would be a really, really good signing for Arsenal. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's who we're waiting for to go sign in the summer. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The Ivan Tony situation is going to uh, is going to probably be that we don't sign him in January. 
and we're going to have to wait until the summer because of the whole Brentford situation. And in the summer, there could be other opportunities, maybe Victor Ozyman, maybe maybe Isaac. But who would you prioritize? Would you rather Arsenal go spend big on a Victor Ozyman? Would you rather Arsenal go get the Premier League proven in Ivan Tony, Or would you rather Arsenal try a thing and try to see if they can get the likes of Alexander Isaac? I need to know, who would you rather Arsenal sign? Let me know what you guys would rather Arsenal sign, who you'd rather ar see Arsenal sign uh, in this transfer window. Right? And then there's also this backlash and this controversy. People talking about Ivan Tony's attitude. Do you think there's anything wrong with a player having that type of attitude? Do you think there's a, a problem with a player basically voicing their opinion that they want to leave and go to another club? Because I don't think there's a problem with that. Brent, uh, and also, with that being said, Brentford are going to demand around 80 million to even entertain the potential of Ivan Tony parting ways this January. I think 80 million is really good. I think 80 million in today's market, 80 million, I think that's really good. I think 80 million in today's market makes sense. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Arsenal to go sign him for 80 million pounds. That's just me. But hey, we're going to talk about some other transfers also for a second because Arsenal are linked to two other players also. So let us let me just talk about this quickly. The Arsenal are linked to two Everton players, Onana and Braithwaite. The reality is Everton's financial situation makes it possible that Arsenal could be looking at them, but I don't think Arsenal are going to pull the trigger on Onana in this January transfer window because it would cost around 60 million. And Braithwaite, if it wasn't for their financial situation, he could be going for, because he's one of their most sellable assets, he could potentially be going for 70 million. So I don't know how much Arsenal are going to actually look at these guys because even though Everton are in a financial situation, these are two of their best assets. And for them to sell either of them, it would be upwards of 50 million. And I just don't think Arsenal are going to spend that type of money, this transfer window, on secondary uh, secondary choices at this moment in time. That's 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 just me. I don't think Onana is a first choice. I don't think Braithwaite is a first choice. I think it's just more opportunistic at this moment in time. Um, what else is there that we need to get into? Because there is some other stuff that we need to get into. Reportedly, we are still looking at Shabby uh, uh, Simon. Reports that Shabby Simon, Arsenal are uh, are looking to uh, to sign Shabby Simon in the summer. Now, we do still need some depth in our wing positions, and Shabby Simon has made they they have made it clear that he would be going back to PSG. But if his loan is not extended and there is a situation where we could buy him or we can loan him from PSG, I would take him on a heartbeat. I think Xavi Simon is an absolutely fantastic player. And we witnessed him last year when he played against us in the Europa League with PSV. So that is another player Arsenal are looking at. Xavi Simon is a player that we're looking at. And I would take Xavi Simon in a heartbeat. I think he would improve us massively um, with, our squad, with our squad depth. And he's a quality, quality player player who can not only play in the midfield but can play in the uh, in the in the wing position arsenal's um academy youngster mikhail birith is still on loan and he is currently has 11 goal involvements in his last 14 games for motherwell uh, lower down in the lower down in the in the leagues so there you go he's doing well People talking about Emil Smith Rowe. Let's be honest. Emil Smith Rowe is not going anywhere this transfer window. We know this. You know this. We all know this. Emil Smith Rowe is most likely going to be staying. He's not. He's he's not really making a big difference. He's kind of been forgotten recently, but hopefully he can get back into the fold. I still believe in Emil Smith Rowe to a certain degree. I wouldn't sell him yet. But let me know what you guys think about Emil Smith Rowe. Hopefully, Michaela that they can trust him a little bit more and give him more of an opportunity from now until the end of the season to get him more game time and to see how he does. Um, what else is there? Um, Cedric is supposed to be leaving, and then he's supposed to be leaving. We already know about that. But we, there was another interview that, that I want to show you guys quickly. Let's let's get to it. This was done in the summer, and I think this was the interview with Edu in the summer. So let me just play it for you guys, and you guys can take take from it what you will. Yeah, I think... I think 
uh, the, the project is not linked with the Champions League. The project is linked to be every single year be better club, uh, put quality in the squad, better player, better group of players, also. everything. So every single year we have to be better and better and better. I think we're doing quite well, but in the sequence of that, for sure, we're going to be fighting for something important. First things first, this is um, last year's, not this summer that just passed, but that's last summer's transfer window, ending of the last summer's transfer window when we were in Orlando and we just signed Zinchenko. He did an interview with Sky Sports and he spoke about ambitions of the club and he didn't really specify that we're going for any major trophies or anything like that. He just specified that we're just trying to improve. I would hope if this interview was done now in 2024, that it would be much more concise and in, in saying that we need to get more uh, finish, um, get closer to the finish line and get over the line. Of course, you always want to progress and you always want to get better uh, results at the end of the day, but we can't do results-based analysis. Edu, his job is to actually look at the underlying numbers, look at everything and say, here's where we can improve, here's where we can do better, instead of just saying everything's a problem, we need to throw everything out the, in the, uh, and throw the baby out of the bathwater, like a lot of fans are doing right now. But yeah, I, I take this whole interview that Edu did and I just say to myself, at what point do we stop talking about the process and, and baby steps? And what at what point do we just say, we need to do whatever it takes to win now because I don't think we're there yet, but last season we should have tried to, we tried to win then and there with the, some of the moves that we made in the January. It still wasn't enough. This summer we tried to push on at this moment in time, it's still not enough. This upcoming summer, if we don't fix our attack, there's no more excuses. We need to fix our attack. We can no longer be just talking about nearly there. We're almost there. We should be there now. Off the back of a title challenge, off the back of our first season back in the Champions League, we now have a little bit more experience in our run. We now have a little bit more uh, of a better season. We've seen how quickly Liverpool got their midfield sorted. We can get our attack sorted out quite quickly. We just need Edu, the board, everyone to have the same level of ambition as the fans. And I hope that if he was to do this interview in 2023, he wouldn't be saying... Yeah, I think I think uh, the, the project is not linked with the Champions League. The... I think at this point, the project should be linked to trying to get success instead of just building the squad because we've now gotten a squad that I think is good enough to start winning. The project is linked to be every single year be better club. I agree with that. Every single year, we should try to be a better club. Uh, put quality in the squad. Better. A hundred percent. We always want to add quality to the squad. Player, better group of players. Us, everything. So every single year, we have to be better and better and better. I think we. I don't think anyone disagrees with what he said there. Doing quite well, but in the sequence of that, for sure, we're going to be fight for something important. And you know what? In the grand scheme of things, he might actually be right. But hey, that's enough for today. I don't think there's anything else that we need to really talk about. Um, we have been linked to a Turkish winger, but until there's more information on that, I'm going to hold on on that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Ivan Tony to Arsenal. Let me know what you guys think about Braceweight or Onana to Arsenal. Would you rather have somebody else come in? Uh, what do you think about Edu and the board's ambition at this moment in time at Arsenal Football Club? And yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you hit that like button. And of course, go check out the channel sponsor, SofaScore, the one-stop app for everything sports that you need. You don't need to go anywhere else. Download that app right now. It helps the channel out massively. And of course, it will help you out in the long run also. But anyways, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Love for the love, people. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Peace. <laughs>